Why the heck are my feet so insanely itchy? We're gonna try and figure it out in today's video. Itch is not fun. Some people deal with bouts of itch from head to toe, whereas it can be localized, including to, well, primarily your feet. Regardless, it is not fun. So what are the reasons? Well, there are actually a ton of reasons, but today we're just gonna be covering six relatively common possible reasons. And importantly, I'm going to be giving you some suggestions of things that you can try out in interventions to get yourself some relief. Number one is a condition called dyshydrosis, otherwise known as pomphilex. This is a type of eczema. And I've talked about it in other videos on hand eczema because it can affect your hands commonly, but it also can affect your feet. And what happens is you get these little firm, clear, water-filled blisters that are almost look like tapioca pearls or caviar, some people describe them. Oh my goodness, they are so itchy. They often crop up on like the size of your feet. And then all of a sudden they kind of erupt and leak out this clearish fluid that dries down and the skin becomes very scaly, flaky, red and inflamed. And it is just very, very itchy. So how do you get rid of this? Well, there's no cure. A lot of people are gonna deal with bouts of this from here on out, but there are things that you should be aware of that can definitely trigger flares of it. And one really common trigger is actually sweat on the skin surface. So do your best to keep your feet cool, dry, allow for good air circulation, use powders to absorb excess moisture in your shoes and socks. Make sure you are wearing moisture wicking socks. Make sure your footwear is well fitted and provides good support to cut down on friction and just provide overall better support for your feet. Ultimately that can help your skin barrier out a lot and reduce the risk of flares. The other big trigger though is actually nickel. So maybe avoid any kind of metal footwear like buckles and things of that sort that might set this off for you. I also suggest at nighttime after you've bathed to apply a thick, thick layer of, well, one of my favorite things, plain petroleum jelly, Vaseline to your feet, cover them with socks, hang out that way for at least an hour, if not sleep that way. It really can help cut down on flares of this. It is not fun. Next is tinea pedis. What the heck is that? Athlete's foot. Athlete's foot can itch like none other. It can look a few different ways, but primarily you're going to have these red sort of raised areas along the sides of the feet. It's going to be very scaly for the most part, although honestly, ringworm, athlete's foot, these are fungal skin infections. They're sneaky and they can look like many other things. You'll often have flakiness on the sides of the feet, the bottoms of the feet, also between the toes and your toenails may be impacted as well, which is, you know, fungal nail infection. Similar to dis hydrosis or pomphilix. Excessive sweating is a risk factor for athlete's foot or any kind of fungal skin infection. Those types of organisms really love a moist, humid environment. So again, do your best to keep your feet cool, dry. I suggest using powders to cut down on moisture. Now, as far as things that may help get rid of the ringworm, I suggest a over-the-counter called Lamisil, otherwise known as terbenafine cream, applied to the feet, between the toes, under the toenail, Else can definitely help to clear this up, although it doesn't always work because there are sneakier strains of athlete's foot out there, but that certainly can help. A lot of people have found relief doing, it'll sound bizarre, uh, soaking their feet in Listerine mouthwash. Also, some people find relief soaking their feet in a dilute solution of white vinegar. Uh, it does have some antifungal properties, but when in doubt, definitely see a board certified dermatologist. As I suggested, athlete's foot or tinea pea it's sneaky. It can look like a lot of other skin conditions, it can look like psoriasis. Some of the other things we're going to talk about in this video can be hard to distinguish from athlete's foot. And in order to rule it out, you know, your dermatologist may need to take a biopsy. Um, ideally, they would do a simple uh, scraping of the flaky skin and look at it in the office under the microscope, although certain regulatory issues may seem to make that even more challenging than it needs to be these days. But yeah, your dermatologist should be able to figure that one out and get you on the right path to treatment. The other reason for intensely itchy feet, which I personally deal with, is you can be allergic to things in your footwear, in your shoes, in your socks. You know, I'm always talking about allergic contact dermatitis as far as things like fragrance and skincare products, but you can develop an allergic contact dermatitis to pretty much anything that comes in contact with your skin on a regular basis, including your clothing, your jewelry, your shoes, your watches, 
hair care products, you name it. And when it comes to footwear, all right, you're gonna have itching on like the tops of your feet, the bottoms of your feet, wherever there is pressure in the shoe, depending of course on what it is you're allergic to in the shoe. And we'll get into some possible allergens in a moment. However, it often will not impact the insoles. In addition to itch, you're gonna have sort of a flaky red raised rash. You can have some blisters oozing. So again, it can look like athlete's foot. It can look like dyshydrosis. So a lot of these things, you know, it starts to blur the lines of what am I dealing with? That's why seeing a dermatologist is so important because it honestly can be pretty tricky to figure out what's what. So the way a dermatologist is gonna figure out if this is what is going on is they're gonna do something called patch testing. And that's gonna help figure out what you are allergic to. And then you'd be offered guidance on what to avoid. So what are some possible relatively common allergens that lead to allergic contact dermatitis, rashes and itching on the feet? Well, there are ingredients called rubber accelerators that are used in the rubber processing. So any rubber component of your footwear that may be coming in contact with your feet will definitely be a contributing issue. Also, if you wear leather shoes, you can become allergic to something called uh, potassium dichromate, which is used in the leather tanning process, as well as formaldehyde in leather tanning. I already mentioned nickel, but a lot of people are also allergic to cobalt, and both of those things can be found in shoes and footwear, for example, metal buckles, paraphenylene diamine. Now, I've talked about this allergen in videos. It is actually an allergen found in hair dyes, but it's also used as an antioxidant in the rubber making process, and that might be something that you are allergic to. Some people are allergic to neoprene, which is what is like in wetsuits, goggles, but also can be a component of the insoles of shoes. The allergen in neoprene is something called dialkyl thiourea. You might even be allergic to the glues in your shoes, the adhesives. A common allergen in adhesives is something called colophony. One really sneaky allergen that actually can affect your footwear is something called dimethyl fumarate. Now, dimethyl fumarate is what is in those little mold sachets that come in things. If it's in like your shoe box, your new shoes, you get them, you put them on, it could have transferred that allergen to your shoes from the little mold sachet and give you a foot dermatitis. You may notice that you also get a dermatitis when you sit on a couch because dimethyl fumarate may be in your couch cushions. When it comes to allergic contact dermatitis, the name of the game is avoiding the allergen. And if you're not sure, you, you haven't been able to see a dermatologist, but you suspect that you are allergic to something in your footwear, what else can you do? Well, try and change up your shoes, your footwear, see if there's a particular type of shoe that seems to be causing this. Also, you might try wearing two pairs of socks, although that can be miserable in the summer along those lines. While wearing two pairs of socks can help protect against potentially the allergens transferring to your skin, it may create a scenario where you are sweating more. And if you are sweating a lot in your footwear and your shoes, of course, it could aggravate any of the other foot itch issues that we already have talked about. But with allergic contact dermatitis, when you have sweat, it allows for leaching of more of that allergen into the skin and makes things much worse. So again, try and keep your feet cool, dry, moisture wicking is the name of the game. So you might try wearing flip flops, although if you're allergic to something in the rubber and the flip flop, it could be bad news bears for you as well. Yeah, allergic contact dermatitis can be quite tough. Patch testing though can really nail down what it is you are allergic to. Number four is something called chill blains, also called pernio. I actually have a whole video dedicated to this condition. It's very interesting. People develop these red itchy bumps on like their toes, their feet. When they are exposed to cold, non-freezing is key, cold, non-freezing and damp weather temperatures. It's thought to be some sort of abnormal blood vessel response, but it can be very itchy. And the way to avoid this is to take measures to actually warm the skin in advance of being exposed to the cold, damp conditions and also to maybe wear little warming packs. You know, people get this on their hands. We tell them to hold those little warm packs or to have gloves. The key is to keep your feet warm, dry. If you're existing in a period of time during the year in a place where it's cold, but the temperature is not below freezing, it's cold and it's damp, you have to go outside a lot. Maybe you commute by foot or you work outdoors. A, a thing that can really be a game changer is actually warming up your feet and your hands in advance of going outdoors. Um, in the olden times, people would like warm up their 
socks on the radiator in advance of going outdoors, that actually can make, make a difference. Um, if you do develop this, um, ibuprofen can help alleviate the discomfort. Number five is actually, this could be hives. There's a specific type of hive called delayed pressure urticaria. Urticaria is just a medical term for hives. Delayed pressure urticaria is just what it sounds like. You develop hives with a delay after you have had a lot of pressure on a given area of the skin and the feet, you know, they're under pressure quite a bit. So if you have done some prolonged standing, jumping, running outdoors, or you've done any kind of fitness activity where you're like, you know, jumping a lot, putting a lot of weight and, and stress on your feet, sometimes right away, but usually as the name implies with a delay of about three to four hours, you will develop raised red welts on the feet. And it may not be as obvious to you once they're developing if you're still wearing your shoes, but it's very, very itchy and uncomfortable. Now, the thing about hives, any type of hives, is they are made much worse by rubbing the skin. So as you go to scratch, you actually make the problem worse. The other thing that can bring these out in people is wearing very tight shoes. So when you have a flare up of hives, um, I suggest being really gentle with your skin, use cool compresses to alleviate the discomfort. Scratching, of course, makes it worse. So you should lean into those cool compresses to keep your yourself from scratching because scratching is just a behavior that is very hard to control. As far as things that can help this to keep from coming back, as with any type of urticaria hives, and trust me, there are so many different variants of urticaria, I could go on and on, but a lot of people will develop bouts of this off and on and off and on and off and on for years and years and years. And the only way to control it is to take antihistamines, non-sedating antihistamines, the types of antihistamines that don't make you sleepy. Take them every day in a scheduled fashion. And most patients, when they hear the antihistamine regimen they have to take, they're very much alarmed because it sounds, it's a lot of medicine to take and that bothers people. But we kind of keep taking it, keep adding it. It sort of creates a situation where the cells that are causing the problem in your body, the mast cells, they kind of chill out a bit after all that antihistamine is, you know, there it's, it's, it's kind of like, eh, 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 and it can go away. Some people will, eventually spontaneously go away. What causes this type of thing to occur in the first place? Some people develop urticarias, types of hives, whether it be delayed pressure urticaria or any other type after they have maybe had a cold or flu virus. Even if you didn't physically feel ill, viruses can pass through your body. Your immune system may recognize them very quickly and take care of them, but that doesn't mean they don't leave a mark. And sometimes they kind of leave your immune system a bit frazzled and you're stuck with while well, dealing with hives. Some people, the hives might be triggered by stress, hormonal changes. Check out my video on how to get rid of hives fast because I go into detail in that video with regards to different tips and tricks for controlling urticaria hives. But they definitely can appear on your feet. You may not even realize that that's what's going on. Try and wear shoes, footwear that isn't super tight or restrictive because again, tight clothing, tight footwear, friction all aggravate hives. All right, and the last thing I wanna talk about that might be affecting your feet leading to itch is actually peripheral neuropathy. The little C fibers that course through the skin can become damaged as a result of neuropathy. And of course, if you deal with peripheral neuropathy, you may have some numbness, some pins and needles sight like sensation, but you also can have bouts of very itchy feet. This is especially true in patients who have diabetes. Patients with diabetes are very prone to going on to develop peripheral neuropathy. And so they really can struggle with itchy feet. And in diabetics, they also have dry skin. The skin doesn't retain moisture as well. So it's more prone to water loss and subsequent bouts of itch. That being said, diabetics are also at risk for tinea pedis, athlete's foot. So you definitely want to make sure that you know what you're dealing with because it could also be one of these other things that I have talked about. But peripheral neuropathy, you're not going to have a rash per se, but you will experience bouts of itch. Not always. Some people have more of like this burning sensation. It's very uncomfortable. And there are medications that can help soothe those little, you know, sort of frazzled damaged nerves like um, gabapentin, pregabalin. There are a variety of others um, that can help soothe 
that and get you some relief. Topical uh, capsaicin can provide some relief from this type of nerve related itch. And you can find capsaicin creams in like the drugstore. They're used uh, to treat like aches and pains. So they'll, they won't be in the skincare section, but rather over like where they sell, you know, ice packs and things for sore muscles. So that can be helpful as can um, like topical menthol can likewise be helpful. It just kind of helps to distract those little nerves and sort of silence those itch signals. All right, guys, so those are six possible reasons why your feet are so itchy. But again, there are a ton, a ton of other possible reasons, primary skin conditions, different types of infections, which I did not cover in this video. So it is by no means a comprehensive list, just kind of a starting point of things that you might think about, maybe try and eliminate exposure to that might help you out. But definitely try and see your healthcare provider. They can, if needed, refer you to a board certified dermatologist to really clarify what exactly is going on with your feet, why you're dealing with this. It's not something that you want to wait around and try and hope that it just goes away because itch can be very disruptive to your quality of life, especially to your sleep. And it kind of then creates this vicious cycle where you get poor sleep. And once you have, you know, a couple of nights of bad sleep, your nervous system is a lot more, you know, sort of revved up. And so is your immune system in the sense that itch tends to be even worse than had you gotten good rest. So it creates a vicious cycle of stress poor quality of life, you definitely want to have it addressed sooner rather than later. It's not anything anybody should have to deal with. Itch is um, very similar, in fact, to pain. So if you have chronic pain, which I know a lot of you do, you know, maybe you can empathize a bit with anybody who has chronic itch because it likewise can be very debilitating to deal with these kinds of symptoms that really just wipe you out. Speaking of itchy skin, do you ever deal with bouts of an itchy arm? Well, if you do, you're going to want to watch my video on itchy arm that I put out, was it last week? It's going to be on the end slate, which will be the next slide. Once I disappear, there will be a slide with a thumbnail from that video. If you just click on it, it will take you to that video and you can watch that next if that is of interest to you. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.